So the first thing that we do is we're going to open up the vehicle case and check for any damages that might have occurred while the system was in transit or while it was in storage. The big one being cracks in the Pelican case, chips to the float, cracked pieces, anything like that is going to tell you whether or not the vehicle has been damaged before it even hits the water. So there's no damage here, taking out the dual function gripper, which is our accessory, and lifting the vehicle out of the case. And take the float off. Keep track of where you keep your wing nuts and nylon washers. There are extras of both in your tools and spares kit in the event that they get lost. No functional gripper, there's no scratches, there's no dents or dings, so it's fine. Put any leftover packing material back in the case and get that closed up and set off the side. We're going to attach the dual function gripper right here. We've got our whip, which is labeled gripper. Now if this goes together stiffly, it might be time for it to be re-greased. It went together fine this time. We're having no issues with greasing. So just tightening it down. The key point is that it goes flush, rubber to rubber. You don't want there to be a gap in between those. We mount the gripper, angle towards the center, and tighten it in place. Nice and stiff. You can see that it is towards the camera itself. We're also going to gently check that the camera has full spacing and when moved quickly there's no sound of a motor spinning up. That tells us that the clutch is still operating correctly. When going slowly you can hear the motor spin up. You don't want that to go too quickly. Check all the whips. We got our Oxalite whips. They're all intact. Our unused accessory whips are plugged into their dummy plugs. Both of them. Our thrusters are all attached. And our rear camera is attached. Now you can turn the vehicle on its side to check these. And to verify no damage to any of the connectors. There's cuts or scratches in any of these cables. Make sure that they're not too deep to see the inside of the cable before you hit the water. All right, so there's nothing wrong with this vehicle. We're good to go ahead and attach the rest. Don't lose your accessory keys, your Allen keys. They are necessary to get things on and off. We're going to go for the wheel, open up our case, angle it so that the tether is going to be coming off and straight into the water, so towards where you're going to be launching the vehicle from. In this case, our tank is this direction, so we are rotating so it's unspooling towards the tank. We're loosening the quick clip. This can either be on the reel or on the vehicle, depends on when it was sold. There we go. Now you want the tether to be going over the rear bar. Now normally this is going to be covered in a spiral wrap plastic to protect it from scratching the float. In this case, for demonstration purposes, we're just leaving it bare and exposed.
Make sure that your 16 pin connector is clear and clean. So you can wipe it off. If it's dry or if there's not enough grease on it, you can regrease it right now. If it is dirty, you can just rinse this in water and then regrease it. Firmly push in until they are fully locked. Now I'm applying no additional force to get these together. I'm simply turning the locking collars. They are not applying any force to tighten them. There we go. Now I'm going to put the float back on. Make sure not to cross thread the wing nuts when you're putting them on. It gets progressively harder to get them back attached once they've got a second thread to follow. Same with over tightening. They should simply be finger tight. They will self cinch once the vehicle is in the water. Now, normally we keep the deck cable and the interconnect cable in the power supply unit. They may be in somewhere else depending on if the system has a second monitor. Check both ends of the cables before using them. For any water or debris, these should be dry. So once you verify that that cable is clean, you can take your dust cap off. And immediately connect your deck cable. Now when this goes on, it shouldn't be using the locking collar. There we go. If you have to turn the locking collar to tighten it on, it usually means that there is a pin that is pushing against the face of the connector. Before connecting your deck cable, make sure that all the pins are fully extended out and none of them are bent off to the side or pinched together. Connect it at the controller. Plug in all appropriate cables. Then, and attach the duct cable, or sorry, we're going to attach the interconnect cable. Shore power in this case. I'm going to attach our AC live. Now that we've verified everything's attached, make sure that everything is off position on the controller. And plug it in. There's an audible beep when you give it AC power. If this is beeping before you've attached anything else, or as soon as you attach this cable, it means you've plugged in the AC before everything else is connected. You want to plug this cable in last. AC power should be the final thing that the system gets. Okay. We have a signal to the monitor. Fan is running on the power supply. There's no clicking or any sort of burning smell. It means everything's running, running fine. Before it hits the water, we're going to go for our surface checks or dry tests. The system is able to fully tilt down and that the camera is not fouling on anything during the tilt. So that's its whole range. Up to its maximum. Then back straight. Check that 
zoom is operating correctly. And then the manual focus is operational. Check lasers. If the system has them, the system does not. Auxiliary lights. That's two on the front on this vehicle and one on the back. Check that the rear camera is operational. With lights on. With lights off. Check the camera lights, starting very low, and visibly verify when it's on its lowest setting that all eight are lit up on both sides. Don't stare directly at the LED for too long, they're not good for your eyes. And slowly up. And then slowly down. There we go. And tilt down, take a look at our gripper. There you go. Open. And close. Clockwise. Kind of clockwise. Check the horizontal thrusters in the back. Forward. Reverse. The right, to the left, make sure that at higher trim it does go faster, and that at minimum trim they do not operate. There we go. Check the verticals. At minimum trim, low trim, going up and down, strafe, port, or starboard. Port. Medium trim. Maximum trim. System has now been verified. And we're good to power it off. Before powering up the controller at any time, make sure that all the controls are in their off positions. So the lights are off. Vertical manual control is in its off state. Autobet, altitude, and heading are all off. Trim knobs are both set to the minimum. Camera is set to its home position, which is straight to the uh, to the right. Autofocus is on. Front camera is on. Aux lights and lasers are both off. The handle supports the full weight of the vehicle.